been um, 10 years since my last cat mole committed suicide to punish me for going on holiday. And um, I just started dreaming about kittens. And um, I, I was passing the RSPCA in South Bristol and I thought, I'll just pop in and just like, on the off chance see if they've got anything. So I popped in and said, I'm interested in throwing all my resources at a predator. Um, don't know if you've got anything that could be quite kind of cute and endearing so that I can delude myself, it loves me. And they said, well, we've got one kitten, but um, she's reserved. And then someone else behind the counter said, oh, no, she's not reserved anymore. They don't want her. And um, I think they didn't want her because she was so sick. She was in the kitten hospital. And they took me in to see her. She was in isolation. I had to wear, like, plastic pinion gloves to handle her. And she's just the most tragic thing you've ever seen. She's just this little forlorn blob of fluff. And she'd been abandoned on the 29th of December, so probably like an unwanted Christmas present and too young to be away from my mother really and um, she was frantic to, to be handled even though she was so ill and I got her out of the cage and she just she just sat in my hand and she purred so loudly I thought she was going to detonate and then even though she was really poorly she sort of scampered at my arm and huddled under my chin purring and I thought you so want to be loved and I so want to love you so I reserved her and uh I had to wait three weeks to take her home because she was so sick. But um, I visited her loads and the days I couldn't visit I rang up and I'd say, hello, I'm ringing to inquire about my reserved kitten CT01. And they'd say tragic things like, well, Pooh's still very runny, but she's quite bright in herself. <laughs> Ow, don't hurt me. <laughs> Ow. Wee. And then eventually, after three weeks or so, I, I took her home. Oi, oi, little Mickey monkey. And you should do this. Oi, come on. And uh, I had to sign a disclaimer because she, she had a parasitic worm that can be transmitted to humans. I got home and I got a, a frantic text from my best friend from school saying, what if it emerges and will you have to wrap it round a pencil? And I was sort of more concerned the amount of cat food she was packing away that she was breeding some sort of giant leviathan like the Lampton worm, which I've taught her. Oi, you milked a dozen coos. Ish, lads, had your cups, I'll tell you a an awful story. Ish, lads, had your cups, and I'll tell you a good the warm. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, don't hurt me. For fuck's sake, don't hurt me. Don't struggle. <laughs> Same as it ever was. Fuck's sake. The vet didn't comment on any of her sort of um, sociopathic tendencies, but she hasn't got a heartbeat, it's official. <laughs> Christ, stop it. No, be kind. Fuck's sake. The vet put, put the stethoscope on her chest for ages and listened and then said, no, I can't hear her heart beating. She's purring too loudly. Oh, I think she might be the devil. Ow! My parents are in their mid-80s visited and she bit my dad so hard he bled all over his best shirt. <laughs> and they were like, oh, we really love her. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, Ow! Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Size with great big teeth and great big gob and great big goggly eyes.